I have in the studio with me Jared Green. Hi, Jared. How are you? Jared Price. <laughs> oh, Lord. Green. <laughs> I'm giving you a color. You're right. I'm, yeah, Mr. Okay. Jared Price. How are you, Jared? I'm good. How are you, baby? Okay, so you're going to be Jared for the rest of the time, okay? I, all right. <laughs> okay, so again, if uh, District 7, just in case you don't know what district you live in, everybody, uh, 38103, 38105, 38107, 38108, 38122, 112, 128. Okay, so Jared, let's jump in there. All right. So let's talk about your your platform. Because yeah. I was on your website. You have a pretty nice platform. What is your platform? What do you, if you get the victory, what are you bringing to District 7 that they need so desperately? I'm bringing a voice and I'm bringing another, a representative that actually shows up. That's 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 mainly what I'm bringing. I mean, the big thing is, is our platform wraps up into a quote that's on my Facebook header. My Jared Price for Memphis City Council District 7 is my Facebook page. And across the top of that, it says, it's time to shine a light on communities and issues that have been left in the dark. Me, one of the things I've learned through being commissioner for Memphis City Beautiful, serving on the Downtown Neighborhood Association, serving as a president, two-term president for Victorian Village, uh, Community Development Corporation is I'm learning that communities feel like they don't have a voice, especially when you start talking to areas like North Memphis, Klondike, Smoky City, you know, New Chicago, uh, Hollywood, Douglas, those areas. And it's a stark contrast when you go from areas of Midtown and Downtown to those areas to see such a big difference. Well, I've noticed, like I said, I research, you know, of course, all of my guests. And uh, you seem to have a, a serious ground game. Let's talk about your uh, endorsements. Sure. Uh, for one thing, because this, I think these days you can't really r run in what politics if you don't have a lot of uh, what do you call uh, support? Yeah. Yeah. Money. Yeah, money. So is you what... <laughs> also be into working. It's almost like you got to earn money. You could be the best candidate in the world, right? Yeah. But you got to. How can you focus on just uh, raising money and then try to focus on what the blight and all the other things that you know that's really important. Well, I mean, that's when you get you hire a good campaign, you know, staff. Okay. Um, luckily, I hired a, a a friend of mine who I've been friends with for a while, but she's a uh, Latina lady. She's a mother of two. She's a wife. She is uh, awesome at what she does, and she's got so much information on the voters, where they live, how they vote, how much they vote. I mean, and it's all public record, but, it, you know, you have to work up all that information. And she, um, you know, she basically, like you said, a campaign to be effective does take money. That's why we ask people to invest in us if you yes. believe in us. Okay. Yeah. Cause so, I mean, you have to pay people to knock on doors. You got to pay your campaign staff. You got to pay for T-shirts and, you know, yard signs and all that stuff. Oh, so, and we've got been so lucky to receive the three of the biggest unions in the city have endorsed us. The Memphis Police Association the Memphis Firefighters Association, and the Memphis Realtors Association, as well as Planned Parenthood. So we've gotten some big names there behind us. Yeah, but when I first saw your research and looked you up, the first thing I saw was Planned Parenthood. And being a female, you know, naturally, that got my attention. That's when I started looking at, okay, who's Jerry Price? Okay, <laughs> Planned Parenthood. And then I started asking some of my friends who's Jerry Price. And then I looked back on some of my email and Jared Price was highly recommended to be on your show. Well, if you ever do something about politics, I know you don't normally, but Jared Price, because he's really out there knocking on doors. What is it about you riding on buses? <laughs> I went. With, I got invited uh, with the Memphis Bus Riders Union, which is founded by Mother King. And Mother King lives right around the corner from me in Victorian Village. And she advocated for, you know, more better bus systems for our neighborhoods, um, better routes, better times. And that, that, that union constantly strives to create a better matter. So I went and rode with them to talk to them about ideas, listen to them about what they need, and then ideas that I had that we could help collaborate together once I'm elected. Okay, so tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I've uh, been in Memphis almost 10 years now. Uh, I, I transferred here um, It was as a senior manager for Lowe's Home Centers. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I've, I've got a green thumb, and I can also... Shout out to Lowe's. Yes, and... Um, <laughs> I was moved here. I was senior manager for them. I mean, we did business, you know, op operations, business management, all that. So 
Um, and that's what got me involved. And when I moved to Memphis, I saw a city that I really loved. Okay. I've been coming here all my life. We just lived across the, the river in Arkansas. But I've been coming here all my life, and I saw a resurgence once I moved here. Okay. And I wanted to be part of that change that I, that I was seeing. My grandma always said, be the change you wish to see. Yes. Yes. I saw that on your site. Yeah. Okay, also, what about justice? Because I also asked uh, Miss Tony, um, justice reform. Yeah. That, I, I saw that also on your platform. Yeah. So what do you envision for justice reform in District 7? Well, I would love, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different issues and different points of justice reform that I want. An example of one would be, I want to, you know, really focus in on, you know, nonviolent offenders like, you know, that have, you know, a little bit of, that get arrested with a minor possession of marijuana. Yeah. They're staying in jail. That's and they're so crazy. And, and they're staying in jail because of, you know, and they, they've, they're they they costing the taxpayers dollars because they had some marijuana on them. I mean, let's give them a fine. Let's do what we need to do. But I mean, to keep people in jail over a small possession of marijuana with, no, you know, no intent to sell, yes. no intent, none of that stuff. When you've got states in the same country that it's completely legal to have this. And look, <laughs> and, not, and not only that, Jared, you think about the people that are out because of drunk driving, they're still out after being pulled over 15 times. Yes. But they'll hold a person with a joint in jail forever, but they'll let the drunk driver that's probably going to eventually kill somebody or himself. Yeah. He's out. Well, you know, and that's why I'm that's glad. That's so unjust. It, it's it's, it's just, not unjust. That's, me, that's kind of my, 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 my view on it. That's why I'm glad that we've got the Memphis Police Association's endorsement because I look okay. forward to working forward working with Memphis police, hearing what they feel like are the best ideas for justice reform, hearing from the citizens as to what they think the justice reform to be, and put those two together because a lot of people forget Memphis police are still Memphians. They're still our, you know, the same, they're the parents of the of the kids that go to school with our kids. They're our neighbors. They're our, you know, so we need to work with them because they are Memphians too. And I think once we get a better voice and a better communication going between the police and our communities, we can be a better city. Yeah, because that just, to me, that's just, that's just really unfair. Yeah. And it's unfair to a demographic. Yeah. A lot of the demographic is your your district. Yep. And I, and I, I do want to say this, and I mentioned it earlier, that most people that I speak with um, about um, Memphis City Council, they all say the same thing. We need fresh, new voices. Yeah, I You agree. know, we're at a time now where we need younger, I don't mean no harm, but <laughs> we need... Progressive people are going to be younger thinkers because our city, I feel, has as much potential as any city. Of course it does. But if you, if the same people are running the same thing and they're just only there because people still vote for them, but they're not doing anything. Yep. Somebody said to me about both of you today, I wish one of them was... Um, Running for city council, I think it's nine for Westwood. Yeah. Because they actually don't feel like they have a representative out there. And I'm telling you what I know because I have family out there. Yeah. They really, and when those people are like in their 80s, they don't have that fight in them that they had at Jared Price age, right? right? Yeah, I'm So 31. they just saw the kind yeah. of sit home and complain about, yeah, the trash been piled up over there on Western Park for weeks and nobody. And it make them feel like they're, isolated, but you know what I told my daddy? Hmm. Don't vote for them. <laughs> well, this is what for voters need to realize. So voters all have a single member district that represents them. Exactly. One, one person. So you got districts one through seven, but then you also have three at large or super district positions that you vote for. So when you go to the polls, every person in the city of Memphis is going to vote for four council people. You're either going to vote for your single district, one through seven representative, and then you're going to vote for three people. Either you're in super eight or you're in super nine. So remember when you go to the polls, you've got four council people that you're going to have to elect. Now, personally, when I get on council, I want to have a conversation with the rest of the city council and the city of itself to see about, let's break this down and make this simpler for the yes. voters. Let's have 13 single member districts. That way the districts are smaller. You can connect closer to your people. You can focus in on your job better. And it, it it's a lot less confusing for the Yeah, voters. because when I looked at District 9, you're right. I saw this super. super and, yeah. and I'm like, I still don't know who's. Look, overlooking Westwood because yep. I'm still upset with this stuff piled up week after week when I go down to visit my family. Yep. So I wish and I pray that more people like yourself, the people that really have a progressive agenda, that really care, not just going in for some power grab, 
but going in because you genuinely do care about your constituents and the people that you represent. I think that's what this city needs. It I doesn't agree. matter if you're uptown or downtown or in Frazier, wherever you are. You need someone that don't vote for people. If you accidentally vote them in and you realize they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. if you're voting for your interests, you're going to vote that person out. I agree. That's the power that we have. Yes, and people forget they hold the power to change this. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, they do. So we have a couple of more minutes, but I want you to tell me this. What really motivated you to run in the first place? Well, I ran for mayor of the town that I lived in when I was 18 years old. Really? Yeah. And it was because I saw things that were needed to be done and that weren't being addressed. Okay. And I've always had that. My grandma said, like she said, be the change you wish to see. I see a district that I live in. They don't have a voice. There's tires on the side of the road. There's yes. burnt out houses. There's overgrown lawns. And there's a representative who's not showing up and representing the people. And it just, you know, showing up is half the job. You show up and then you listen, you talk, you connect. Yes. And so it motivated me to want to step up from Memphis City, beautiful commissioner. It wanted me to step up from serving on the boards that I do. And how can I be the most effective change? And I think running for city council is that answer. So that's that hashtag price for progress. Price for progress. That's right. Hashtag Jared price. price for progress. Okay, well, I want to thank everyone for tuning in today. Wonderful conversation. And Jared, I wish you and everybody that's truly running for any position in the city of Memphis. Let's start at the top all the way to the city council. I don't care what position you're running in. I want people in position that really care. Well, I About ask, the tires. If you're District 7, I ask for your vote, Jared Price. All right. <laughs> and how can they reach you, Jared Price, before we go off the air? JaredPrice.com, J-E-R-R-E-D, Price, like the price is right, dot com. <laughs> right. Or you can email me at Jared, J-E-R-R-E-D, for council, and that's the word for, F-O-R, Jared for council at gmail.com. All right. Thank you all so much for listening to Eye on Memphis. I'm your host, Betty Lamar, and thank you, and we hope you enjoyed your morning drive with us thanks for listening to conversations with betty lamar visit our website www.thebettylamarshow.com email betty at thebettylamarshow.com subscribe to our youtube channel betty lamar memphis we'll talk to you next week on conversations with betty lamar